Serial wire viewer tracing in Atomic Tree Studio is supported using ST-Link and Segger J-Link. In order to enable SWV tracing, you must make sure that it is set up correctly in the debug configuration. Let us take a look at how this is done for the two different debug probes ST-Link and Segger J-Link. We must first open the debug configuration dialog. I have a project called CM4 project. It already has a debug configuration for the ST-Link. Let us go through the SWV related settings. In order to be able in order to be able to enable serial wire viewer, we must first choose SWD interface, then enable SWV. The core clock setting is set up correctly by default in Atolic hosted projects from the project wizard and in projects available on TrueStore. But if you choose to modify the core clock setting in your project, you must also make the same change in your debug configuration. Failing to set the core clock to the correct value can result in strange serial wire viewer behavior. The user may receive no trace packets at all or wrong type of trace packets. This can be really confusing. It is also the most common problem and the first thing to double check if you're unable to collect trace data. The debugger requires its own port for SWV trace data information. On ST-Link, the user have the option to enable sync packets. The ST-Link emits sync packets on a periodic basis. If this setting is enabled, the serial wire viewer support will discard all data between two sync packets if an overflow packet is detected. In this way, we can be sure that all displayed trace information is correct. If this setting is not set, all trace information collected will be displayed, regardless if an overflow has occurred. Sync packet is simply a way of making sure that the trace information shown is accurate, with the trade-off that more information that may or may not be correct is discarded. The debug configuration for the ST-Link is now properly configured. Let us also take a look at how this is done for the Sega J-Link. I will create a new debug configuration so that the same microcontroller can be interfaced with an ST-Link or a Sega J-Link simply by switching which configuration that is used. By double-clicking on the embedded C++ application, a new debug configuration is created for the active project. Let us also give this debug configuration the suffix Segger so that it is easier for us to distinguish between our configurations. You can double check that the debug configuration was created for the right project and that the intended build configuration output will be used. Now on the debugger tab, set the debug probe to Segger J-Link. Make sure that the SWD is selected. On the Sega J-Link and on the Sega J-Trace, you need to select which trace system that should be used. The Sega J-Link supports SWV and ETB. The Sega J-Trace additionally supports ETM. Choose SWV. Again, make sure that the core clock matches the core clock configuration for the project. The Sega J-Link and J-Trace supports SWO clock speeds up to 6 MHz which makes it possible to transfer data three times faster than with an ST-Link. Additionally, sync packets are not needed as the trace buffer implementation for Segger allows writing and emptying the buffer without this overflow problem. SWV is a technology with only one data pin and as a result there are limitations as to how many trace events can be recorded at the same time without overflows. Okay, let us click apply and save the settings made to this debug configuration also. Currently, my microcontroller is connected using an ST-Link. I will therefore select the ST-Link debug configuration and start my debug session. In order to use SWV to analyze our exception behaviors and gather statistics for our system, we must first open the SWV exception trace log view. In all SWV related views, there is a trace configuration button, allowing us to select which types of events that should be sent out on the SWO line. We must now enable exception event tracing and, in order to be able to understand timing issues, we can enable timestamps for each exception event packet that is recorded. Make sure that all other events are disabled to make sure that overflows are kept at lowest possible level and thus making sure that the gathered trace information is correct. Click OK. Then click the red record button in order to start recording trace information into a PC buffer.
Continue the execution and the exception trace log view will show you how exceptions are firing in target. Let us now pause the execution and take a look at the information collected. There are different columns in this view. Index, the index number for the SWV event packet. Type, there are different types of exception event packets. Exception entry, exception exit and exception return. The name and the peripheral columns are showing the name of the peripheral. Function is showing the function implementing the exception handler. Cycles give you CPU cycles and timestamps is in uh, seconds or milliseconds. In this example project, timer 3 has higher priority than Sysstick and external interrupt 0. This can also be seen in the trace log. We can see that we enter a Sysstick exception. While executing the Sysstick handler, an interrupt of higher priority is received. As you can see in the log view, we jump from the Sysstick handler interrupt to the timer 3 interrupt. The timer 3 interrupt is finished and we return back to the Sysstick handler. We can then return back from the Sysstick handler to common thread mode, waiting for next interrupt to fire. In this way we can see interrupt nesting and piggybacking. When the execution is suspended, it is possible to double click on an interrupt to automatically jump to the handler source code implementation. So the data tab in this view simplifies spotting problems such as timing and prioritization issues. In order to scroll up and down, scroll lock must be enabled. All data in this view can be selected by clicking Ctrl A and can then be copied by using Ctrl C. It is thereby possible to analyze your information further in an external tool such as Excel or whatever you prefer. There is also a second tab called Statistics, which is to be seen as statistical profiling focused on exceptions and interrupts. A difference between Serial Wire Viewer Statistical Profiling, which can be seen in another Atolk video tutorial, and the Exception Statistics, is that the Exception Statistics are gathered based on Exception Event Packets. The Statistical Profiling is based on collection of PC samples. In the Statistics tab, you can analyze how much time that is spent in different exception and interrupts. Each column is described in more detail in our user guide, which can be found through the Information Center. Therefore, I will skip their formal definition now. Okay, let's see what we have collected here. As an example, we can see that the Sysstick interrupt has fired 547 times, which corresponds to 40% of the total 1,346 interrupt events we have collected. Out of the time spent in handler mode, the Sysstick handler consumes almost 100% of the execution time. We spend 83% of the total execution time in handler mode, this means in some exception or interrupt handler. Out of that time, the Sysstick handler consumes 99%. This could give you a hint on where to start focusing your optimization efforts. We can also look at the average, the fastest and the slowest runtime of the handler functions. As seen here, there is a quite big variation between fastest and slowest runtime. We also get information about the first and latest received exception packet for each exception type. This is shown in both cycles and seconds. Additionally, it is possible to see the data tab information represented in a timeline graph. It gives you a quick glimpse of what is going on in your target in terms of exception and interrupts while the application is being executed. This representation of the information can be used to quickly identify deviations from an intended exception behavior pattern. Each bar represents a number of exceptions interrupt events captured over a certain time frame. Holding the mouse pointer over a bar will display which exception events that happened during the specific time frame.